is the month for spooks, but what is spookier than encountering your worst fear? Look, I don't know, I don't know, but if you know the answer, come find me. I asked my Instagram followers what their worst fear is, and I'm going to be reading three books that include some of my followers' worst fears. And a lot of them were like critter, animal-based. We had snakes, spiders, um, frogs. I got clowns very often. Some were very just straightforward, like death. I'm afraid of dying. Heights was a really common one. I have picked a few fears that I thought would be very interesting to read about. One of the fears that I'm going to read is the fear of birds. And for that one, I'm going to read The Parliament by Amy Potwatka. This is a book about murder owls. This is a book that I have hauled on my channel before. And I don't know, a book about murder owls just sounds really creepy. This is one I've been wanting to read for a little minute. So I'm going to be reading this one. So in this book, we have a school teacher who is in a library with some of her students. And outside of this library is a horde. I don't know what is it called a murder of owls? Wait, what is a group of owls called? Is it a murder? <laughs> what is a group of owls? Upon some extensive research, AKA Googling, what is a group of owls called? I have figured out that it's called a parliament. My flabbers are so gassed. How did I, did you, did you know that? Be honest, be honest. Did you know that a group of owls is called a parliament? Who knew? Anyway, there's a parliament of owls outside of this library and these owls are murdering anyone who steps outside of this library. How is this teacher going to get her and her students out of there? We're going to have to read to find out. The next read is a two for one and this book is going to cover plane crashes or heights. I kind of combine those into one. So plane crashes or heights and drowning, which are both very I think reasonable fears. For that one, I'm going to read Drowning by TJ Newman. Yes, this is a library book. Where's my library card? It's in use. So I, I didn't know TJ Newman is actually a, was actually a flight attendant, but this says flight attendant turned best-selling author TJ Newman returns with an edge of your seat thriller about a commercial jetliner that crashes into the ocean and sinks to the bottom with passengers trapped inside and the extraordinary rescue operation to save them. Oh goodness. Imagine looking outside of your plane window and just seeing you're underwater. Uh, no thanks. I've seen people talking about this book on TikTok, but I hadn't heard of it before that. So I'm really excited. A lot of people love this book. Adrian McKenzie blurb this, I love him. Drowning is the Poseidon adventure meets the Martian. It is another can't put down edge of your seat thriller from TJ Newman, one of our most exciting new authors. The last fear that I received that I'm going to read is claustrophobia. And for that one, I'm going to read Unbury Carol by Josh Mallerman. Josh Mallerman writes really interesting books to me. I hadn't heard of this one before doing my research on some of these fears and some of the books that contain those fears. So I'm going to read the synopsis. Carol Evers is a woman with a dark secret. She has died many times, but her many deaths are not final. They are comas, a waking slumber, indistinguishable from death, each lasting days. Only two people know of Carol's eerie condition. One is her husband, Dwight, who married Carol for her fortune. And when she lapses into another coma, plots to seize it by proclaiming her dead and quickly burying her alive. The other is her lost love, the infamous outlaw, James Moxie. When word of Carol's dreadful fate reaches him, Moxie rides the trail again to save his beloved from an early unnatural grave. Interesting! I am so excited. So uh, these are the three books that I'm reading, which I'm really, oh, the glare. I'm in front of the window, so there's a little glare. I'll bring them closer. So these are the three books that I'm reading. I'm really excited, but I thought it'd be kind of fun to 
talk about a few other fears that I received that I have read before in books. One of the fears I received is driving off a flyover. And while this I believe is a cliff, it's kind of the same thing, but this one is Off the Deep End by Lucinda Berry. This one is about a woman who has her son and his friend in a car on their way home from, I think it's like a sports practice. They drive over a cliff and the mother comes up she swims up to the top of this body of water, sees that neither of the two boys are up with her. So she goes back down to try to save her son specifically. She gets back to the top of this body of water and realizes that she saves the wrong kid. Another fear that I received is men and my mind automatically went to Pretty Girls by Karen Slaughter. This one is about a pair of sisters who lost their sister to an unspeakable crime. They are slowly finding out what really happened and the truth is closer to them than they think. This is very graphic, unnerving, awful, horrifying. I'm choosing the bear. <laughs> I'm choosing the bear. Another fear that I actually already mentioned is snakes. And for that one, I have Home Before Dark because snakes play a really small part of this book and it really doesn't have much to do with the plot, but very creepy and scary nonetheless. Another fear that I got is growing old and I think a good one is We Spread by Ian Reed. This is about a woman who we're following her stream of consciousness and we don't know if she is telling the truth. We don't know if she's suffering from dementia or Alzheimer's. We don't know if she's just slowly losing her mind, but she ends up in a, a nursing home. But there's like a sense of dread and unease it's uncanny it's weird if you read this i highly suggest the audiobook highly suggest it another fear that i received is fire and for that one i chose the reformatory by tanana reef do we are following robbie who is a 12 year old black boy in 1950s jim crow south he is sentenced to six months in a reformatory school this reformatory school has some really really wild racist abusive history i'm not going to say much more because i think you should read this i think everyone in the world should read this book so those were just a few of the books that i thought of when i was reading through my answers but i am so excited to begin this i don't know which one i want to start with i think i'm going to see if any of these audiobooks are available on libby first or maybe Libro FM. I'll look at a couple different places, but whichever one is available first, that's what I'm going to read first. I will be back when I choose my first read, but until then, while we're waiting, let me know what your worst fear is. Someone actually said that they feel like if they verbalize their worst fear, it'll come true or it'll happen to them. So if you're one of those, I get it, do your thing. But if you're not and you'd like to share, tell me what your worst fear is. My worst fear, and if you live in the Southern region of the United States, you might have this fear as well cicadas i had my first experience with cicadas earlier this year and that was awful one actually flew and hit me in the side of my head and i <laughs> i was done for i didn't step outside for weeks after that let me know your worst fear and i will see you when i begin reading firstly hi secondly excuse the blue tongue i had a blue coconut slush from sonic a little bit ago so my tongue is blue Anyway, hope you don't mind. I decided that I was going to go with Drowning by TJ Newman for my first read. I started it and this is one of my library loans. I started it on audio and also reading it physically. I'm listening to it on audio through Libby, through the Libby app. They had it available so that's the one I chose and I think it's a pretty quick read. It's a little bit less than eight hours but I read or I listen to audiobooks on like three times speed so should be more like a few hours I hope I might be able to finish it tonight um, but we are opening up and we're on a plane and one of the plane engines has stopped working and that's how we're opening up the book and the reason I turned this camera on is because I read something and I'm gonna read it to you action are we going to crash several passengers looked at her she'd voiced their worst fears <laughs> worst fears and the video is called Worst Fears. <laughs> Isn't that really fun? It's amazing. Um, am I wasting everyone's time? And I read that sentence, she'd voiced their worst fears. And I said, I need to turn that camera on. This needs to be documented. Um, so anyway, I am going to continue reading. Like I said, I think I can finish this book pretty quickly. It's less than 300 pages. So, and it seems like it's pretty fast paced. I mean, we open and the plane is, I mean, the foreshadowing from the first three pages is crazy. I'm gonna keep reading. 
and I'll check back in with you. It's been two days since I've picked this book up and also since I started the video. So I haven't done a ton of reading. I did not read it all yesterday, but we're back in it. The great thing is that I am flying through this book. I'm listening on audio obviously, and also reading physically. I've made it to chapter seven, which is 23% of the way through this book. I think I can finish this book in maybe two hours if I just sit down and read it straight through, which I am going to do. So this book starts out, we are in the midst of the plane crash, right? There's chaos. We are meeting a ton of characters, flight attendants, passengers, pilots, just all sorts of people all sorts of personalities. We first got introduced to Will and Shannon who are a father-daughter duo that are on this plane and I kind of figured they'd be the main characters since they are the first characters introduced. So the entirety of chapter six is Will, I think it's like the day, it's like right before he and his daughter get on the plane and we kind of find out a lot about their family and things that have happened, trauma, like all sorts of things but I kind of have a little prediction that we're gonna do that for each character because we've met so many. We've met an elderly couple, we've met a newlywed couple, we've met a another child, she's about Shannon's age, who was flying by herself. We've met a few flight, flight attendants, we've got some pilots. So we've met a lot of people. I know this is about the rescue of the flight, but I wonder if we're gonna get a little bit of backstory on all of those characters we've met or if it's just going to be Will and Shannon. I think, I don't know, I would like to get a little backstory on everyone and kind of see how they ended up on the same flight because that's the same thing we got from Will and Shannon. But yeah, this is pretty fast paced. It took me a little bit to get into it because I think there was just so much chaos of the flight. There were a lot of characters, lots of things happening, lots of pilot jargon. I don't know, my feet stay on the ground. I don't know what y'all are talking about in this book, but I'm enjoying it and I feel like I finally kind of settled. That is the most pivotal moment in reading books for me is that moment where you feel like you've settled in, you're starting to understand the characters, you're starting to remember character names, you're understanding the plot. I, I feel like I have settled into this book and so now I'm off to the races, but we're rolling. I wanted to give a little bit of an update. I changed my angle a little bit. I kind of like it, but what's gonna make this better is I'm getting a fourth bookshelf. I've mentioned this in a recent video. I'm getting a fourth bookshelf because Things are starting to pile up up there. And I also have a big stack of books on the floor right here. So once I get this fourth bookshelf, I'm, this is gonna be the angle baby. Are you seeing the vision? Okay, off track, ADHD. And I will say this book is scary. Like the whole plane crashing, all the chaos was really scary, especially if you're listening to it on audio. The plane had been sinking. Like the plane is sinking underwater claustrophobic perhaps I don't want to drown perhaps there are so many of the worst fears that I read from Instagram in this book I am like this was I could have really just read this and knocked off a few of the fears right, this is really revving up so I'm really excited to get back to it if you've read this book let me know what you think about it because I'm enjoying it so much I'll be back hello uh oh there's a red cardinal yeah on our little bird feeder, he's so cute. Sorry about that. Hi, we're in the kitchen, wrist twisting like a stir fry. I, let's see, things are happening in drowning and I'm loving it. I am loving it. I also wanted to show you guys that I'm making homemade chicken stock and I'm gonna talk about it really briefly because it is really cold in Nashville today. It is, we've hit the 50s degrees Fahrenheit we've hit the 50s and that's pretty cold for us because it was literally 87 degrees like two days ago so we're making chicken noodle soup homemade and I'm doing chicken stock right now so I'm going to show you but I wanted to give an update on the book first because it's going really well I'm 42 percent of the way through I've been listening on audio while I've been preparing chopping shredding cutting things and I was wrong in my last clip it is not going to be a character study of every single person on that plane we are following will and shannon will's wife is also involved she's a bad butt she's 
everything. I love her. So there are people preparing to rescue the people on this flight. And I'm very interested to see how TJ Newman, who is such a G, but she knows what she's talking about. And that's very evident because there are a lot of phrases and jargon in this book. I think I referenced it in the last clip, but there are a lot of things happening in this book where I'm like, going right over my head, kind of like an airplane. Anyway, uh, so she's doing her thing, TJ Newman. I'm enjoying it. I am very interested to see how TJ Newman is going to keep this book fresh since we have been on the plane for, I'd probably say 85% of the book so far. We have 58% of the book left, but so far things are moving at a pretty fast pace and I'm really enjoying it. I will say Will, the main male character, he's a little too macho for me. I know like you're stranded, trapped on a plane in the water after it crashed. I understand that and your daughter's on the plane, but like he's just a know-it-all. He's such a know-it-all and he, I don't know, he's not ruining the book for me, but it's just something I've noted, but he's getting to be a little bit too much for me. I think the role his wife plays is going to help level that out a little bit. If you've read the book, you know, hopefully I haven't finished it. So hopefully it, I don't know, but he's just, but he loves his daughter and I can respect that. Okay. Wait, I really want to show you the chicken stock that I'm making. It's on the stove. I'm bringing it to a boil, but I just wanted to talk about it. I'm making chicken noodle soup. I'm doing that, but I decided to make my own stock. I've been accumulating stuff for my stock freezer bag. So I have used two rotisserie chickens. One of them Sorry if you don't like the side of meat, <laughs> don't look. But I have one rotisserie chicken that we bought today, shredded up, because I'm gonna use this for my soup. Then I put the bones in there, and then we had um, some other chicken bones from the past. I had frozen those, and we've added carrots, celery, onion, garlic. I put tomatoes in there. We have thyme, green onions, dill. Um, I put peppercorn in there and a little bit of chicken bouillon. I have not salted it yet because um, I want to bring it up to a boil, let it simmer for a little minute until before I do that because I want to keep it low sodium so I can, you know, you know. If you cook, you know what I'm talking about. I'm going to show you. Okay, hold on. Let's come on over. So here is my, so here's my stock. It's in a little stock pot and we're bringing her up to a boil. You can see my little peppercorns in there. I am about to finish the book and I'll be back with my final thoughts. I finished drowning and I am so happy I'm doing this video because I don't think I would have ever picked this book up had I not done this particular video. And I'm so glad I did. This is a five star easily i was kind of worried about the pacing of this book i was like how are they going to be in this plane for this whole book and it not get very boring it was not boring there's a little bit of romance in this book which was very heartwarming i teared up a little bit at the end of this book if you know you know the drowning aspect did what it was supposed to do i don't have a fear of drowning necessarily but i felt scared reading this book there is an opportunity for some of these characters to swim in the ocean underwater deep in the ocean so this was a very successful read for this vlog i am so happy i read this but this is just such a good exploration of fears family dynamics grief forgiveness hope this is one of the most emotional thrillers i have ever read and i really enjoyed it the next book i'm picking up is unbury carol by josh mallerman and i actually found this one on Libby, which I am so excited about. So I have the audio. So basically this is following Carol, who is married to a man named Dwight. And Carol has a condition that causes her to fall into a coma randomly. She can feel it coming on, but I think she's kind of embarrassed about it. So she's only told two people. One person is her husband and one person is her former fling lover james moxie he's an outlaw he's a bad boy and dwight is like this really meek scared man he just he's he's not macho they're very opposites dwight and moxie james moxie carol is a very rich woman and dwight feels like he's kind of stuck in her shadow so she 
falls into one of these comas and Dwight plans to tell everyone that my poor wife has died. Oh, she died. She ain't dead. And tries to bury her so that he can take her fortune for himself because we don't want to work for the things that we have. We don't want to earn things. We want to bury our spouse, our spice alive, take what is theirs and then act like nothing has happened. That's what we want to do in life, everyone. Write that down. Obviously news spreads because Carol is very rich and I believe she was pretty well liked. Word reaches James Moxie who knows of this condition and is like, she ain't dead. I have to do something about this. So we have different perspectives. We will see, I'm really excited about this. Josh Mallerman is an interesting writer because I feel like he intertwines fantastical elements into his books, but they're still rooted in reality. I am going to get to reading and I will check back in with you later. Hello, I am 66% of the way through Unbury Carol. This book is, full of drama. This is one of the most dramatic books that I have ever read and I am eating it up. I'm eating it up. I have noticed that Josh Mallerman has used the word berry or any variation of that word in this book so many times. This is such a good book for this vlog. Just her stream of consciousness makes me feel a little bit claustrophobic and I only like that feeling when I'm reading books. And even then, it'll I don't know. Do I really want to be feeling claustrophobic? I don't. Josh Mallerman does fantastical so well and in such an entertaining way. I am loving this. So I think I've told you a little bit about the premise of this book. The fact that she would do this to Carol is disgusting. And it's interesting because Dwight has heard rumblings that this person is on the way to save Carol. This person, his name is James Moxie. There are tales about this man. People think that this man has magical powers. Now, at this point, I'm not sure if he does or not, but this man is a legend. And Dwight, who is weak and a punk, is like, I can't, I can't fight this guy. I would lose 10 out of 10 times. He feels like he needs to put a stop to this. There are so many pieces that just get added in and just thrown on top of this story. It is so fun. I'm having such a good time. It is 1040. I'm listening on audio. I will be finishing this tonight because I have one more book to read after this, but I'm really enjoying this. I feel like I'm a little bit of a night owl these days, but anyway, I am going to continue reading this. I probably won't see you until tomorrow unless something crazy happens, which is entirely possible. I'll see you when I see ya. I finished Unbury Carol and I did finish this at 1 a.m. I don't know how I feel about it. I really, really enjoyed the lead up to the ending. I don't know how I feel about the ending though. I'm between a 3.5 and a four at this point. Some parts of the ending I really loved and thought made sense. And then other parts felt a little rushed kind of like it just wasn't super satisfying. I was so invested in the chase and the journey, the adventure, like being in the minds of these people that are stressed about certain things, whether it's Carol because she's buried alive or whether it's Dwight because he's like someone's coming for me or whether it's someone else because someone's chasing that. Like I was enjoying that. I was enjoying reading the anxiety, the decision making processes, when people were getting close to finding people or getting there. So when we got to the ending, I was like, ah. you know, it's an odd book. It's a weird little fun, funny, just quirky book. And I enjoyed it so, so much. I'm so glad I read this. I also will say I did read this ending very late and I think I recorded something. I was probably extremely delirious. Now that I'm talking about it a little bit more and remembering certain things, I'm leaning more towards a four. Yeah, I just want everyone to know Dwight, if I ever catch you in these streets, if you're ever in Nashville, it's on sight. And I want you to know that about me. I, uh, Dwight, man, I, <laughs> I want to box him. Here we are with the parliament. At this point of me filming, I have started editing this vlog and 
I just want to say being on camera when I realized what a parliament was was a very humbling event for me. I don't know. I don't even think I've ever seen an owl in real life. Like how would I ever need to know? what a group of owls is. I need to get to reading. I'm gonna check in with you in just a minute here. I'm reading this book. Sorry, I, I took the dust jacket off. I'm reading this book and there's a character named Farah in here. And there was a character in Unburied Carol named Farah. So now I feel like I need to skim the pages of Drowning and see if there's a Farah in it too. I, I have no reason for telling you this. I just thought it was a little bit kooky. Also too, this book does not have an audiobook of any kind. I've checked Libby, Audible, I googled it, no audiobook. So that's interesting. I'm listening to rain and thunder sounds on YouTube <laughs> because I just, I don't know, I need to be listening to something. I have, you already know, it's, it's a struggle for me. I'm only four pages in, but I thought I'd check in and let you guys know that Ferris seems to be a very common name in this vlog. So I think I'm just gonna start calling myself Farah. Do I look like a Farah? Okay, I'm gonna get back to reading, bye. <laughs> First update for the parliament. I don't know how I feel about it. I am a about halfway through, I'm on page 172 out of about 350. The people in here are not making good decisions. So we have Mad. I think her name's Madigan. Madigan? So Madigan has been talked into teaching a chemistry class at a local library. So she has a class of about seven kids that she is making bath bombs with. They discover that there are a bunch of owls outside of this library and someone tries to leave and they leave this earth. So now everyone's freaking out. The police don't know what to do. It's like a really... It's weird. So Madigan and her class are not the only people in this library. Of course, there are people who are just there to read, people there, who are there to work, employees. There are many people in this library, many adults, and somehow they keep leaving this group of kids in random rooms and they just leave. And they keep leaving these children in rooms by themselves. You shouldn't be doing that. It's like these kids could have tried to open a window. These owls are plummeting through windows. They are just like breaking the glass. They're flying into the windows. It is odd. I don't know how to feel about it, but I'm reading it really quickly. Um, as you can see, I have a little bit of tea and a rooster. I chose this because I'm reading a book about birds. We're actually getting a book inside of a book. So Madigan found her favorite book from her childhood called The Silent Queen in this library. And we're getting passages of this book intertwined into this book but as far as I can tell the Silent Queen book serves no purpose she's kind of like she's reading it to the kids whenever she leaves them for an indefinite amount of time they're reading the book themselves I just I'm not sure that this is necessary and the book switches so there's a chapter of what's happening with the owls and then there's a chapter of the Silent Queen book and it's just Going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. For what? I don't know what's happening here. When I get to the end of the book, I might be eating crow. <laughs> get it? Because birds. I might be eating crow and having to come back on here and take back everything that I just said. But as far as I can tell, I'm just wasting time reading this book. I don't know. There's a man in this book named Nash and he is irritating me beyond belief. So Nash is a childhood friend of Mag's that she discovers is in this library with her at this time and he is weird. He knows the kids that are in this chemistry class that Matt is teaching so he's not a stranger. Mad has no experience with kids. She doesn't really like kids. She's not good with them and then in an emergency situation like this she's like I don't know what to do. They're not listening to me. Someone please help. So she calls on Nash to watch the kids and she's going downstairs to, you know, get an, uh, get an update on what's going on. The phones aren't working. He just appears downstairs randomly. Why did you leave those children in there by themselves? Like, what are you doing? Or she like falls asleep 
outside of the room without the kids and he somehow is also sleeping in there with her when he's supposed to be with the kids bro what is and then sorry i'm a nash hater right now someone says i'm not scared of the owls and tries to leave and obviously they get owled and nash reaches for the door to try to leave to go try to help this man In what freaking world would anyone think that it would be a good idea to go outside the one place? If there is one place you're not safe, it's outside. Like this is not the first person we've seen get owled. And Nash says, I can save him. I'm going to go. No, honey, you can't save him. Honestly, part of me wishes he did go outside. And I'm gonna continue sipping my peppermint tea out of this really cute glass. Oh, I mean mug. But like, where is any responsible adult? I, I'm looking around. And I don't see one. I'm giving this a three. I thought it was just okay. This was just of things away from being really really good I think I really love the character development of Mad the main character didn't care about anyone else though not even them kids <laughs> I don't even care about the kids there were some really heartfelt moments some moments of growth for Mad that we got to see which I really enjoyed the owls very interesting very interesting not a bunch of backstory on why or how they're there. The book within the book. What a waste of time. What a waste of time. It added nothing to the story. I feel like this book could have literally been a novella. All in all, it was just okay. I didn't hate it. I didn't love it. I don't even know if I liked it. It was just okay. I was just kind of waiting for some pieces to get tied in together that I don't think ever did. I will say, if you are afraid of owls or birds, do not read this book. This book has so many bird references in it. Not only are they being attacked by murder owls, they're in the library researching this, reading books about birds. It's just everything's about birds so that concludes this vlog this was really fun to make i really feel like i expanded my horizons a little bit i found a new book to add to my favorite thrillers list and also a new author that i'm definitely going to be reading more from also going to be continuing reading josh mallerman i enjoyed this one as well this one was really fun and we had one that just didn't quite hit but that's okay. I would say that this vlog was definitely still a success. And tell me your thoughts. Have you read any of these? Do you agree with my thoughts, my ratings, my little mini reviews? Do any of these contain your biggest fear? What is your biggest fear? Tell me all the things. But that's it and that's all. So I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in the next one. <laughs> you can leave now. I'm just getting out of the way so you can, I'm clearing the path to the door because <laughs> you never remember where it is. You can go now. <laughs> Take those birds with you. <laughs> All right, how do I turn this off? Oh, there it is. Bye.